you'd like to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of the Training One to One podcast, Financial Planning Matters. You can get in touch with them through their website, www.fpms.ie, for expert financial advice. The following is a conversation with Chris Forrester. Chris is the current PFA Player of the Year, as well as the PFA Players Player of the Year for the 2023 season. At 31, Chris has had an extensive football career, starting at Bohemians, moving to St. Pat's, but also having a stint in the UK with Peterborough, where he captained the side against Chelsea in the FA Cup. This was a fun conversation. Chris is arguably one of the best players in the National League at the moment. It was a pleasure to have him on. But it was interesting to see a fun side of Chris. Aspects from playing FIFA after games and then also on casual weekday evenings, as well as small things like his opinion on younger players coming into the league as being a little bit more arrogant versus what he was previously, all the way to small things about what he wants to do after his football career, which includes coaching and potentially even mentoring players about being professional footballers. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and leave anywhere up to a five-star rating across Apple Podcasts or on Spotify Podcasts. Thank you very much. Uh, this is one we've actually, we've wanted this for a while. To be honest with you, I, I wasn't going to say this, but I think it's funny. We DM'd you about this. Yeah, and I, I, I was listening to you on other podcasts. And you're like, you're, on, you're terrible on your phone, supposedly. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised you haven't got back to us. But here we are. Yeah. Anyway, we're rolling. Huh? <laughs> we finally got here. Hey, no, that's the main yeah, thing. That's, that's the main thing. <laughs> so uh, the start of the season, tough, tough loss there, obviously, um, last Friday. But good start against Galway. How, how was the start of the year gone? How do you yeah, think so far? Yeah, it's been fine. You know, it's, it's one of them. You're just, you're just delighted to see the back of pre-season. Um, I hate pre-season, so uh, yeah, I'm just delighted to see the back of that. Obviously, the other day, the result wasn't great. Um, the performance, I thought, was fine. Um, and then, obviously, the, the win down in Galway was a was a good win. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's still early days. Like, I see a couple of people losing their head already. But, yeah. you know, it's when I'm around the game long enough. I've probably, before, when I was younger, probably wouldn't lose losing the head myself. But, you know, it's a long season, so. Absolutely. Do you find that, like, obviously, Dublin Derby, tough result, is it very easy for a young player to get caught up in that, in that like immediate like we're only the second game in, but to get caught up in in that wrap of Jesus, we're already yeah. off to a tough start when in reality that's not the case. No, in reality it's not. Um, I remember from when I was a kid and we'd lose the game. I was like, it's the end of the world. Uh, well, you know what? Another game's coming in six seven days time. Uh, so, you know, you just gotta kind of learn learn to adapt to going again. Um. But yeah, from when I was a kid, I used to think it was the end of the world we lost the game. Uh, especially the early doors, like you're like, oh, we're gonna be like this for the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be the worst season ever. Uh, but no, things change in football, and you know, John today even speaking about was was just telling us like you're gonna have ups and downs. Like you just gotta maintain a, a, a steady level throughout. Like don't get too high, don't get too low. Mm-hmm. Um, I think only recently in my career, and you know, with my later age, um, I start to kind of you know take that for a fact. Mm-hmm. Do do you do anything post post game? So, you, for example, obviously you get a win. It's, it's easy to do whatever. But if you, if you lose a game, is there anything that, that that you do post post games just to to settle yourself, relax the nervous system and whatnot? I, t- I went through phases. Um, it's always been kind of different. You know, I've never really had anything consistent with. It. Um, I used to tend to watch the game back yeah. and over analyze everything the same night. Yeah, because be some nights you'd be getting asleep five or six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, taking caffeine shots coffees mm, yeah and, you know pre-workouts and stuff just to get through the game and um, so i'll be up all night anyway and um, i'd watch it i'd be just watching everything i've done everything that like i think could have been better um and i, I kind of came to the realization that that's just not it's not positive for me like like we do a lot of video on on the game anyway so I've kind of took a step back from that but other than that no really I'll just go home I, I play FIFA <laughs> when I lose like there's a weekend league to play on FIFA so uh, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't affect that that's, that's my number one priority sometimes that, that, that's a good way to be that's probably yeah. a, a positive change being yeah, being, ra- being wrapped up in a in a game like that it was only something we discussed and we, we see it from every, every single player has mentioned so far like the lack of sleep you get after games. You'd imagine, I think yeah. fans especially would imagine you go home, you're knackered after a game, emotionally drained, and you just yeah. sleep. And people don't realise, obviously, there's obviously the caffeine elements, but then just yeah. the adrenaline, the lights, the, the, the emotions of the game. The adrenaline does be so just, high. 
It's crazy. Um, my my girlfriend actually used to be like, "Why why are you not tired? Like you're running around like a madman out there." And I'm like, "It just doesn't work like that. It's just adrenaline is pumping." Obviously, them result depending. Like you're mm-hmm. you're real high or you're real low. So it's 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 very t- it is very tough um, after games, and then some day most days you're in that for recovery next mm-hmm. morning. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, sleep is the best recovery. Um, I'm trying to push that message out there for all <laughs> professional teams. Uh, but no, it is. It's hard, and uh, like you said, you'd expect to just go home, fall asleep, straight asleep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work like that. So, like I said, I. I I come with the FIFA. <laughs> yeah, but even on the FIFA now, I thought FIFA 24, or it's not even called FIFA now, yeah, the yeah. sports one, but we used to play Ultimate Team, uh, oh, Pro, Club, Pro Club, sorry, with the lads, and we completely stopped playing it now That's because of how... It's the most toxic place in the world, yeah. Pro, uh, Pro it's Clubs they, with your mates. They completely yeah. ruined it, yeah. by the way. Have you played oh, the new... it's bad. Yeah, it's we, shocking. We haven't played it this year. Like, last the lack year, of jeopardy. Mates, the, you can't get yeah. relegated. Yeah, no, it is. What's the story with that? Year. I think they've done that to make Ultimate Team a bit more appealing. Um, yeah, but they f***ed it. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's terrible they, they've done a terrible job on it well like that you said playing pro clubs with your mates is, is one of the worst places you can be if you have a bad game <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd rather have a, a bad game on a real football pitch than on pro clubs <laughs> it's not yeah. all bad in there yeah. no, it's Slate City yeah. King or dude Kinga right. mm. Noel King yeah the, who would have had you in the 21s his son was a coach with us and he got done I'm, I'm stitching him up here now he'd be, he'd be fuming but he needs to hear this one now supposedly he played played a square pass in FIFA got pinched Division 1 Got relegated <laughs> and he hasn't slept since. Like he's just he's got murdered on it yeah, ever since. Doyle still talks FIFA about it. Is life sometimes. It's, it's crazy. It's a big thing. Like especially on Pro Clubs, you're letting your mates down. Like, <laughs> it's not a good place to be. Are you playing in the middle of the park in uh, Pro Clubs as well? No chance up front. Chasing the stats. Get the ball in uh, and then just throwing a lot of flicks at the analog. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I rate myself on uh, Excellent. Oh, no, FIFA is a... It's a great way to wind down, but at the same time, we're talking about, like, adrenaline shots. I've stayed up to, like, 3 or 4 a.m. after, oh, geez, yeah. like, tough games of FIFA. Yeah, like, if there's a few SBCs to be done and stuff, like, to get a good player on Ultimate Team, I'm staying up. I'm just <laughs> the like... Uh, it's probably not the best, oh. but to be fair, FIFA's, FIFA's helped me a lot through my career, like, just to unwind and, you know, just take yourself over. I think... Yeah. For my girlfriend, she she realizes that like being on PlayStation is probably kind of one of my happy places. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I find FIFA is a, a big help after games. I'm not surprised. Yeah. You, you see a lot with, even with players, they bring like travel Xboxes and, and yeah, like, they, they invest them, yeah. like a lot of money in it. Yeah. Is it is it generally just obviously it's good crack and whatnot. It's good to have a bit of fun and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, it's it actually is important time, isn't it, to have. Some oh, stuff, I, I really do. Yourself. I think so. I'm a big fan, like big fan of it. I know, like people saying, kids are all playing in playing PlayStation. I think it's too much of that. Um, but I do think PlayStation helped me a lot growing up, and you know, it kept, it kept me re- connected with my friends mm-hmm. when I was in England through the headset. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it was a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That's a great point. It's one of the reasons why we would still actively make time to to play, play it. Play it, yeah. Because we would typically go from either you know. Although it's a football supplementary training company, there's still a lot of admin work. <coughs> you go into the pitch and then you don't have time to meet mates. So it's just yeah. a very good way to, to stay on top of it. I think a question that I really had was, do you do you love football? Like, do you love everything about it? Playing, playing FIFA, watching games, going to games, or is it just a case where it's a job for you? Um, it's a, a varies, to be honest. Some some days you might meet me and I'll tell you it's the best things that ever happened to me. Some other days I, I absolutely despise it. But more, 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 more times I'd say I love it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of watching games. I tend to just kind of get me love through playing it and mm-hmm. you know being involved in in team settings. Um, but yeah, I overall I would say I, I do love it. It's it's given me everything in life. It's it's saved me at times. It's also crushed me at times. But um, yeah, no, it's I do love it. Where did it start? <coughs> Um, on the path outside my mother's house in, in Queen Street. Yeah? Yeah. You'd see me there a lot, um, to be honest, growing up. And then in the house, wrecking the house with the ball. You know, I used to use just anything in the house that I had just to manipulate it through these cups, anything like, anything I could find I'd have, and I'd, I'd always have a ball. Um, so yeah, it started in, in Queen Street in, well, whenever two, three, four years of age. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. If you were to consider, like, Chris Vars as a player, 
you would say, very technically gifted. I, if I'm not mistaken, one of your managers even compared you to Michael Carrick from doing a bit of research that I saw. We're big Manchester United fans, so Michael Carrick was right down my era. But um, do you feel like that aspect of street football is definitely the foundation of what your game is today? Today, probably not. Oh, Growing interesting. Up, yeah. Mm. Like today, I, I find myself walking awful hard these days. <laughs> I, I thought it, might, it went the other way where I was kind of easing off a bit. Um, but I kind of, I find myself doing a lot of hard work. Um, I do a lot of pressing. Um, yeah, but it is, it is the foundation. Um, I do think there's other aspects to my game nowadays that are probably overlooked a bit. Um, but the foundation is always just being technically gifted um, and, you know, putting years and years of hard work into, you know, being as technically as good as I could. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you were saying there, like, there's some parts of your game that people potentially are underrating. Is that through what you've learned over the last five to six years with a combination of hard work in terms of what you're doing off the ball? Yeah, to be fair, I, I find myself, you know, I'm lazy by nature. Um, so if I find myself pressing a keeper, then a centre half, I'm like, well, you changed. Like, <laughs> what is going on here? Um, but I find myself doing that a lot. And I think uh, in terms of whip hats, I think uh, it kind of works sometimes. Sometimes I could probably be a bit more disciplined and, you know, just stay in the shape. Um, but yeah, I do, I do think people would, would overlook it, you know. Um, maybe not my own teammates and stuff, but looking at it from the outside in, um, they probably don't really, really see that because I'd still have mates that will say, like, you're lazy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not. Like, you see me distances, me sprint speeds and stuff. Um, would they tell a different story to what, you, what you're saying? So Yeah. Players get sometimes pigeonholed, don't they? Mm. With regards to, like, two or three years that people like remember them and even <clears throat> there's a difference between like when you were originally at Pats versus where you are at Pats now like and as you said like you've noticed a trajectory in your career that has been different in terms of the player that you are like um do you find yourself pigeonholing some of your teammates as well and you've been pleasantly surprised or is it a case of like ah, I, I'm right about most things really <laughs> no to be fair like when I first started out at Pats I scored I scored more all these yeah, every few weeks. I remember. <laughs> so everyone was like, you must be going to do this for every time. So when it wasn't happening, I found it hard then to, you know, well, I've just set this stall out where this is me. This has to be me every time. And, you know, you can't live like that. Mm -hmm. Like I can't score 40 yard volleys all the time. <laughs> uh, so and then I used to get down on myself when people were saying one hit wonders, all stuff, you know, all the old sayings mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I used to get pigeonholed into thinking oh, I just score all these. Um, and then I always found myself not wanting to score a normal goal. I just wanted the the big goal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but now in terms of pigeonholing other players, I, I, I think everyone kind of does it. Yeah, you naturally, know, you yeah. just label them as this kind of, this is his thing and that's what he does. Um, but it, it's nice to be pleasantly surprised by, you know, younger lads that you just, oh, he's just fast. Mm -hmm. He has other gifts that, you know, just need to be coerced out of him probably. Mm -hmm. So... I think now where you are in your career, you're definitely like one of the most well-established senior players in Pats. And Pats traditionally now over the last couple of years have had a lot of very good underage and youth players coming through. Even the likes of Adam and Sam who've obviously made moves across. Where do you find your role now with Pats in dealing with younger players from previous experience? Do you actually like to get involved with their, I would say, like their mental and physical health, just how they're conducting themselves at Pats? Or are you more hands-off in that sense and just letting the game play as it is? Um, more more hands off I'd say yeah um, more so just being a, a person that could be spoke to if there was a problem for them mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes in, in heat, of game, heat of a game you may let it rip at them mm -hmm. um, this, which is fine I think but you know my role overall I think is just to be there as a as a support rather than try and impose any of my views on them um, that's the, the gaffer's job and mm -hmm. stuff like that so uh, I kind of let them do that thing but you know there's always that assurance there that if they need if they need me they know they can come to me mm -hmm. and yeah that's that's i think the best way for me to approach it anyway yeah because that's one thing that i found very interesting was even at peterborough for example a lot of your leadership was i would say not labeled but more so along the lines of what you've done on the pitch and i even know a couple of things that i found really interesting that i didn't know about um about being a captain even for example like liaising with players for like their specific media duties or sponsorship duties and stuff like that so i think i feel quite sorry for captains sometimes or just senior players because 
they might have this responsibility to look after this player and look after that player. But at the same time, I think you said it on one of another podcast was like, if you can't even look after yourself, I find it very difficult that senior players are expected to actually then look after younger players. So, yeah. you know, I, I definitely find that's something that a lot of senior players probably are thinking about. Like, Jesus, do I have to get involved here? Like, I, I just want to be looking after myself, you know? Yeah, I do find myself like that a lot um, with stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite reserved. I will hold myself back. Even if, like, I feel like a kid is kind of slipping the wrong way or he's, he's really doing well, like, I'll, I'll try and my comments will always kind of be the same level. Mm -hmm. um, they won't be saying, oh, amazing, amazing. Or that's... Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just trying to keep kids level as well. And like you said, it's it's one of them. If I look after myself, I set an example as as the player, as the player on the pitch, and how I can look myself around the training training ground. Um, and you know, just lead by example. Like you said, that that was my kind of role at Peterborough. Um, I was never going in there and screaming, screaming at lads that have been been in England for many years. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I put emphasis on if I'm performing well, that sets the example. Mm -hmm. Do you find sometimes that c captains can get lost? Like, obviously, you've had multiple captains. You've played on the multiple captains. You've been a captain. Like, they kind of get into a bit of identity crisis if it's a case where they they're almost like given this role of like you're the leader now, and they're like, and maybe you've even experienced it yourself, yeah. where it almost you can get wrapped up into the whole idea of the oh, being the captain, the Roy Keane. You've got to be doing this, that, this, that. Where like like G was saying. You kind of just want to play by yourself <laughs> you just want to do yeah. your own thing and then yeah. listen if something needs to be done every so often then grand but do you find that players can get really wrapped up in that identity crisis of oh, i'm being the captain i have to be xyz yeah for, for example with me when i got the peter uh, captaincy i automatically think now i need to be like you said where we can mm -hmm. i need to be just telling everyone what to do and you know I did kind of take that approach at the start, and I was like, "This isn't, this isn't right for me." Like, uh, and then, like you said, it was a kind of an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that that then ultimately led me to kind of just step back and you know, through performances and stuff, um, lead. But I think captains, you you do know you do know who's set up to be a captain. Um, like your captain Joe, he's 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 a captain. You know, you can just label someone like that. He he just suits it. He enjoys the the side of organising everything outside of the the norm, I mm -hmm. suppose. Um, yeah, and he, he does a lot around the club, and I, I think, like you said, I've been under a few captains, and Joe's definitely up there as one of them. It's just like a personality trait, almost, isn't it? It is just the way like, they, they like, carry themselves, like an aura. Yeah, and you can you you're just drawn to them because you, the leadership, and you know, it's nothing. Sometimes it mightn't even be them doing anything. It's just you're just drawn to a person like that, and I think Joe. Um, it's pr it's a perfect position, a uh, perfect person for, for mm -hmm. that role at Pats. Still so young as well. Still yeah, so young. young. But he conducts himself so well. Yeah. Um, he, again, like you can see the work he does, he leads by example and he can talk as well. So mm -hmm. it's, he's, he's just perfect. Best of all worlds. Is that, you mentioned Joe there and you mentioned younger players. Obviously, you don't want to get too involved and I don't think that's a, a bad thing from a senior player either. Do you find anything in the players, the modern game, the modern player, is there a massive difference from the players coming up currently in Pats that you're seeing compared to you back in the day when you first got into Bows? Yeah, massively. What's the difference? The arrogance. <laughs> they are, no, they are. There's a lot of arrogance. Or, no, not, no, not in particular the kids on <laughs> Pats, but you see the kids on Instagram and stuff now. Like um, they, They've already made it before. They've even made 10 senior appearances. Mm -hmm. um, there's almost like a sense of entitlement with them. Obviously, they're getting fed wherever information mm -hmm. and plaudits and stuff that they're getting fed. Um, but I find the game is gone a bit like that. It's the kids almost think that they they have a divine right mm -hmm. to to be at this level. Um, yeah, so it's I, th I do think it's a massive difference. Whereas for me, going into a ball dressing room as seventeen, eighteen year old was was terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like I did not speak in that in that dressing room, and even if someone was speaking to me, I'd, I'd go red in the jaws. Um, so yeah, I do think there's a, it's a massive difference nowadays, and I don't know whether it's it's a good or a bad thing. And um, the, the kids are confident, they're ultra confident. Um, it's just then they need to be backing up, with, mm -hmm. you know, getting into the team and, and making sure they stay there and stuff. It's yeah. positive as negative, because I actually we obviously deal with 
a lot of players who are either jumping in the senior football, already in senior football, or will never kick a senior football in their life. Mm. And they all kind of come across the same, don't they? There's very few, but very little personalities yeah. between traits between them all. I think so, yeah. Which is, it's mad. Like and like you said, arrogance is the perfect word because I actually like arrogance in a lot of players yeah, if yeah. it's backed up. Yeah. But it's very hard to tell that to someone who thinks they're packing it up and yeah. they're not. So yeah. it's like trying to find that happy balance. But if someone's getting into a senior dressing room in in the National League and they're playing week in, week out, you can generally say, right, they've got to be a decent player, especially yeah. playing Premier Division. Do you know what? We'll see, we see with uh, Sam Cordes. Mm -hmm. He's the most ultra-confident guy you'll ever meet and it can come off as, you know, this. he's still my head in. <laughs> like, I remember when I first met him, I was like, what's this kid about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's crazy like the way he speaks about himself the way he carries himself was but he believed in what he was and that was fine because he backed up straight away mm -hmm. he walked hard like you could see the walk he does in the gym he never stopped walking mm -hmm. um so the arrogance like i i do agree with you is a positive thing and it's something that i like in a player as mm -hmm. well and um, but like you said if you're not backing up it's like it's not really a good tray it's all yeah. the on-pitch stuff, isn't it? Yeah, well, remember that story? Here's a story for you, right? There's, um, this is at international level now. So, like, obviously, as Morgan's saying, we're blessed to be working with a lot of really talented young players. But the, the advice that uh, one of these younger players was given was to firstly create <coughs> a, a big social media presence to make sure that they are, like, brand applicable so they can build a profile and stuff. Mm. And then we were basically saying that that's the worst piece of advice I would give any young player, yeah. primarily because we've seen like the impact of social media, even like for our brand and then the effect it's had on like other players who are now starting to build profile, but the profile has been built around a successful career thus far. Yeah. I think now, like even if senior players are telling younger players that they need to have a social media presence before they have 20 senior appearances, let alone a hundred, I just think that, that that's a toxic narrative. Oh, and absolutely. It's, yeah. as, as you said, like if you've seen, um, I'm not just saying in Pats now, like even just across the league of, let's say, if arrogance is the word for younger players that, you know, what's it going to be like in another five or 10 years? Yeah. Like, is the bubble going to burst or? It, it, but it's only the gap. Like the gap is only not even 10 years. Yeah. I would say like from, from some of the players that are, let's say, in around my age group, 99 and let's say 2000 or 98 or whatever. And then to the small senior players in the National League, there's not a huge age gap. No. But the gap between like five or six years in terms yeah. of how they came up through academy system and, and whatnot is completely different. They're all just Instagram balls. It's mad. Yeah, that's Instagram balls. That's all it is, isn't it? That's all there is out there now. Um, <laughs> might get one or two good clips and then that's it. That's <laughs> it for the year. Yeah. Like, sell a um, few likes, handy. It's mad. Like even yeah. if you look at top level now, obviously, this who am I to be saying, but the likes of the Sancho, Foden's, all them. Yeah. Who was speaking about it? Saying that they didn't want to get... Uh, get megged and be clipped on. Someone oh, said it here. yeah, who that was, was a great it? clip. I forgot who said that. Oh, was it oh Phil my Foden? God. No, it no, was a guy no. playing against Phil Foden. Yeah, but it was it was here. Um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, Morgan. We are brutal. I can't anyway, off the top of my head. That's that. But yeah, but, no one wants to get megged and have a clip. But yeah, exactly. But it's like <laughs> people are living for their moments. Oh, like yeah. that, they think that's the career. Yeah. When it's not 500 oh, well, parents. I see myself getting drawn into that. I don't know if you've seen any of the media walk up at Sway. A guy Bernardo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets some good clips now. Yeah, he'd, excellent. He'd hit me up and be like, Ant for me today. And I'll be like, Yeah, I'll get a Meg. <laughs> no, I don't think there's that wrong with that. Like, you can, it's still, it's okay. But um, you're an established senior player, Chris. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, if you're a kid and you're trying to do what I get, it's wrong. Um, but yeah, no, he it's, does. That's in a senior work. game of football. Yeah. Listen, if you're going out and doing it intentionally and you can back it up, yeah. go for it because yeah. I can't do it Life so you may well. have to look see where he is on the pitch and <laughs> gravitate over there <laughs> have a little deal going. <laughs> that, that's view. the definition of arrogance to be fair. yeah <laughs> that's I think that's a fine arrogance I'm backing it up like no that's fair do it. Um, yeah, I back that up as well yeah I think so, that's fine like you said positive and negatives to the kids these days yeah um, yeah so. get up the appearances though mother of god yeah at least like I'd be pushing really really hard uh, yeah so some of them don't even want to play. I don't even think some of them want to play. I, yeah. I, they just want to. I agree with on you. The header of an Instagram or whatever. footballer. Yeah, professional footballer at X Sometimes. at X. That does I my do, head. I in, do think that? that's like a big part of it. Um, but yeah, like you said, it has changed since I came through. And um, to now, kids are different. Even on the pitch, though, did you find when you were coming through, like at seventeen, eighteen, when you were on the pitch, was it a case of? you feel that same pressure being around the senior players or is it since I'm in a game football, the dressing room's different to the pitch. Mm. Did you find that though? Kind of, it tended to disappear 
Um, once the once the whistle kind of started, mm-hmm. now early doors still very terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like I said, I I went into a dressing room with ninety percent of that dressing room were my idols. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I need to you know really really go to a level here where these have a respect for me. Um, so yeah, I thought the best way to approach that was just be quiet and you know when I get on the pitch, just show them that I'm a good player. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, ultimately, it, it did turn out all right. I, I bowled that year. I got mm-hmm. to play with players that I grew up watching, which was, which was great. And did you find then consciously, or maybe not at the time, because you're, you're, you're still so young at that stage, but do you feel like the confidence growing in yourself? You almost, yeah. even around the dressing room and stuff, you might start speaking up a little bit more. And is, is it more a of a little, conscious thing that just happens bit, actually? Um, a little bit. Probably a, a, younger, a younger lad came in than me. Probably start giving him a bit because <laughs> I'm like I'm established. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. nah, but no, nah, I, I, for the first that that whole year up, I was I was very quiet. And mm-hmm. um, first few years at Pat's very quiet as well. Even when I went to Peterborough, I was very very quiet. Change of environment. Yeah, it was just you know, let me earn the respect. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, be loud mouthed or arrogant yeah. in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Um, but firmly believing in myself and my ability that. You know, win these people over by by my ability on the mm-hmm. pitch, and you know that's how I gain my respect. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Right, let's get into that move then. So from Pats to um, to Peterborough. Yeah. How did that come about? First of all, give us a, a brief synopsis on that, and then we'll go into the the details of it. Um, just it was mid season at Pats. So I was doing really well. I think I'd scored six or seven games in a row. Um, Jesus. Something like that. I was on flying form. Uh, I was almost like take me away from this now when I'm really finding my feet um, but now I was, I was on good form and you know I'd been on trials every couple of places before mm-hmm. um, and then been disappointed with not being wanted I suppose um, and Peter would come in and then my agent was like a week later I was I was I was gone they put in a bid Pat's accepted and window was closing so I think I needed to go and then just suddenly just went a week after I found out mm-hmm. um, and then yeah just straight into it do you find that moves can can be forced, especially at times like that? Yeah, like I'd, I'd probably say my move to Aberdeen was kind of was forced, mm-hmm. um, due to probably just wanting to get back at it um, and stuff like that. But the one in terms of people now, it's something I've always wanted. You know, it was from the moment I started kicking the football, I was I wanted to go to England. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know Peter isn't Liverpool where mm-hmm. I wanted to be at, um, but it was still getting to play for England. Two leagues below Premier League, um, so yeah, I dived at the opportunity. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel forced or yeah. anything like that, but I do get that you can just force moves through for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. And then that transition to to full time football in Peterborough. Did, did you find that jump ridiculously difficult, or was it a nice and easy transition? No, it was nice and easy to be fair. Um, the only difficulties was was off the pitch and you know adjusting to life. Mm-hmm without my mummy uh, <laughs> making me bed for me and stuff mm-hmm. so uh stuff like that was was the only difficult part the football was was top like i was i was at it mm-hmm. i felt really confident in my ability and to play at that level and um, the first game i went to watch was pebra i was in the stands just i was there a day or two and mm-hmm. um, i don't know who they played but i was like i definitely play at this level mm-hmm. rent into training and you know found it not easy but i was at ease at that level yeah, yeah. um and then yeah, just pro- as as this thing progressed, um, found myself being really really comfortable and you know being one of the better players there. Mm-hmm. And then like you said, the confidence just kind of came true. And hold it there. If you haven't, make sure you check out www.fpms.ie to start your financial journey today. Yeah, I ultimately had had a, had a good season there. Yeah, did were you surprised of how comfortable you felt? Were you like, just, I'm buying out of here. Yeah, because I, my, I, I wanna, like, my character is like I'm really in myself. Like I will not push myself on people. It might be hard for people to believe. When you see me on a pitch, I'm a different person. Mm-hmm. To, you meet me elsewhere. Um, so around the place, I was I was kind of quiet and stuff. And then when once the football started, I, I knew that's that's my that's my mecca. Like mm-hmm. that's my happy place. I can I can express myself in whatever way I want. Um. So yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't really surprised. I I, I did believe in myself. I may may not have looked like that to the lads that I was in the dressing room. They might have been like, he's very quiet and he doesn't really fancy this. But then <laughs> as soon as he seen me on the pitch, they were like, right, he's a player. Yeah. Um. So like I said, gaining that respect through 
what you do on the pitch is, is massive for me. Yeah. And then going into, so you're playing week in, week out for Peterborough, feeling confident. Do you ever, obviously hindsight is powerful and whatnot, mm. but do you ever look back and be like, I could have, I could have played at a higher level? Many times, like, many, a lot of times I would do that. I live with, I, li- I do live with that regret. Um, and it, it kind of affected me later on when I come back, mm-hmm. I had to come back home and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, there was, there was like, there was times I was in the team and, you know, you had people coming to me and saying, oh, they'd rejected bids from this team or that team. And I'm like, well, that's a champ team, like a, a top champ team. Why are you, why are you rejecting that? Let me go. Mm-hmm. Let me progress. Um, cause that was the main aim when I went to Peter Rose to, <clears> you know, <throat> springboard, go again, go again. Um, but yeah, no, I do, I do live with that regret. Um, Ultimately, it was me. It was me who made the decision. So I'm like, I worked as hard as I allowed myself to. Um, so as much as I do regret it, it's my own fault where to the level I got to. Um, so, but no, I do think I could have played a bit higher. Yeah. F- f- listen, dude, living with that is, is tough. The football yeah. career is so short. And as you know, things can happen like that. And then your life changes and yeah. that that's tough, tough to deal with. Um, but like you're saying there, a couple of champ clubs come in. Mm. Championship football is is excellent. Like yeah. be, obviously, people say it just below the Premier League, and it's so competitive. But it, it's actually an, an excellent level. Yeah. And you were saying there that clubs have c- came in for you. Well, were so you were you involved in that at all? No. So yeah. like I'm hearing like they rejected million pound yeah. bid from this team or wherever. <clears throat> yeah, I gotcha. And then that started getting into my own head. I was like, Jesus, I just want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I do. I, like, I don't. I don't think I'm wrong in saying it. I think there was a part of me one one time believed that I was at a Premier League level. Mm-hmm. Now, wrong or not, I still believe that mm-hmm. myself. Um, it's for other people to you know kind of debate over. But I do think I could have at least reached top Championship level, um, especially in my good years. Mm-hmm. All it like takes, yeah, is a rub of the green, isn't it? Sometimes, and you, you, you literally when you were saying it with the run you had with Pat, six, seven games where you're yeah. bang at it, you get that before a window. Yeah. And you're hot property. And you can carry that into the next, like, six months. All of a sudden, th- th- like, yeah. you're top. Yeah, That's is, it. Yeah, you, life has changed. And that, and that can live for, for three, four years. Yeah. You look at some of the players that bounce around the Premier League. Yeah, it's crazy. It's mad. Yeah. And, like, some of them are, listen, they're playing the Premier League. They're obviously top yeah, players. Yeah, I do get caught up in that saying, like, he he's <laughs> playing the Premier League. Like, yeah, yeah. He's obviously not, but the standard of the Premier League is crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, you're obviously judging them off the top of the Yeah, top. yeah, of course. But these guys just get badly judged. Yeah. yeah but yeah, in terms but of like getting getting a good run of games, like even like playing the FA Cup game against yeah. Chelsea and stuff. Helps. Yeah, like the that's when the interest really starts mm-hmm. amping up. Um so I was like, I'm off here, like I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously you're hearing things and stuff, but no. I do I do I do think I could have played at a higher level. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't say hurt on the way. I do think I could have played close to the top of mm-hmm. level in, in England do you find living with them rumours is tough while playing so you're yeah. currently up here but your job is there week in week out you're in that same dressing room that same facility the same grounds yeah. and you're hearing this hearing that age is saying this he, yeah. media saying that players is it tough to be present in those it was moments? because like it's one of them like you know if you get moved to this team the wages dramatically go up mm-hmm. lifestyle changes you're playing against different level of football yeah you're, you're obviously living a, a better life in, in some regards um so yeah it was hard and it did start to kind of get get on top of me when i was hurting like because it was happening regularly where i was hurting they're rejecting this or whatever or whatever um so then i start kind of resenting the club i was yeah. at because i was like they're, they're stopping me from going mm-hmm. now there might have been any real real offers but it, the rumors, like mm-hmm. I said, were, were coming all the time. So um, mm-hmm. I did. I found it hard um, to, and then yeah, a, l- a little bit level of resentment was there as well. Do you need transparency from from clubs there? Like to, I think so. I, 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 did, I think but so. I say I would presume if I'm playing devil's advocate from their side, mm. they don't want you knowing who's coming after you because no. you'll just be like, yeah, well, I'm going there. They'll see us later. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's tough for them. Be difficult, and then mm. they obviously have to look after their own interests, and mm-hmm. like, if they. Someone comes in, million pound, now we want two. They have to like they have to look after the, the, themselves and you know, it's a it's a business for them at the end of the day. 
but so I do think there there should be a level of transparency, but mm-hmm. I do get why there isn't as well. That's why football such a cutthroat business, isn't it? It is cutthroat to be fair. The lack of lack of communications. <laughs> It's tough to live with. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed. I think you had five managers in two years up here, bro. Um, all with different styles. I think there was one guy who was headlocking uh, different players and stuff yeah, across. Graham Wesley. Uh, well, yeah. Man. Across. I don't know if you listened to it. I think it was under the cosh one of the podcasts. Yeah. He was on it. And he had, he had players doing like animal yoga and stuff. Oh, really? So I thought you'd need, you'll need to watch it. It's, it's I know. I, I know. The, I think I know the part. That's why I was like, oh, that rings a bell. Like His character was, I loved him. Now, to be fair, he's one of, one of my favorite managers to play under. Yeah, um, but like a funny story. Like he he used to he used to have these things before a game where he'd get you really roiled up. And it was one time we played Barnsley away, and uh, sitting there, and he's like, "Imagine your mother is in that room, and sh- there's a guy with a gun to her head, and he's going to shoot her if you do not win this game." <laughs> oh my what? god! What the? F- <laughs> on there, like, I was like looking around, see if, see if I could see her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, obviously went there. I was roiled up, and I really walked like the lads were at it. Um, That's good. And then I ended up getting into a scrap of Conor Hurahan. He stood on me tall. I pushed him. He fell, and I got sent off. Fuck and it was, it was just because I was so roiled up. But yeah. he had that impact on me. I really like I I could relate to him, and you know his passion, and yeah, he yeah. really got me going. Um, but yeah, no, there was there was a good couple of managers at Pete with all different styles. That, that's a good example because I. I've only coached, I've never played professional football. And even when I was younger, playing like amateur, I never, I never was inspired by team talks. I always just thought it was just like smoke and mirrors, just bull****. Like, but that seems like a, a case study where it actually yeah. worked. Like, Oh, it, de- it definitely worked for the <laughs> wrong reasons. extreme. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was crazy. Like, but, you know, that's that was his style. And it, it, it worked for us, you know. He was passionate. You could feel it from him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot like I do find that with team talks, like sometimes you are yeah, just tuned in on the game and this is your job. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the manager could be speaking and like you wouldn't hear hear much, but some some managers have an effect that they can they can get through to you. Um so yeah, he was definitely one of them. What's the ideal blend? Like in terms of detail, tactical knowledge, professionalism, video analysis versus what the actual human is because i think the more that i've seen or have talked to players it's definitely leaning more towards they connect more managers that actually are genuine uh cares of people versus what they are on the tactical side but it seems to me like maybe both sides of the coin seem to get a good bit out of you Where, where's your opinion on that sort of split mine's more of the man yeah yeah it would be um you know, we're Airman Janelle. Like I, I feel like I can relate to him. He's a, he's two kids. Um, he's a family man and stuff like that. So I, I relate to that person more because mm-hmm. I can. Sp- I feel like I could speak to him about my my problems at home with the children and stuff like that. Um, I'd work harder for a man who respects my family more than someone who's just tactics, tactics, tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I do think there is a, a good blend. Um, I don't know what where it'd be, but for me. Them, them person and the interest he shows in you and you know the fine the fine details where you'd be asking how your kids are and you know if there's any other problems asking how this is and that um but you do need a manager who's tactically capable as well so no doubt, yeah. um there is there's obviously a, a fine line where it's it's a perfect blend but for me the person is is who i'd like to play for mm-hmm. as his characters and stuff so yeah, from what I've seen, the wolves come to the door much quicker when the person is rotten versus if they were like... Uh... The wolves come to the door. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Do you know that? Do you know that's a saying? Yeah, it's good though. It's Whoever good. said that? <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. No, I like it's it. It's a saying. I'm I've never heard it. I swear I, I, it is. I, I, yeah, but uh, go on. But onward, they onward. do come knocking though if, uh, mm. if the person's an asshole. Versus, yeah, yeah, they do. They go yeah. much quicker. Can you you can smell it, can't you? Yeah. Quick with yeah. with someone, even just a member of staff or just people around. Yeah, you do. Players Especially know. meeting so many people through football, you you're not you're like no, not quick to judge, but <laughs> you get vibes um, from some people that they're just not genuine, and you know they have their own interests at heart. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know you can tell when someone is genuine then as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think for me, if I was ever to go down that route myself, I'd, as as a person, like I'd rather know everything about the player, mm-hmm. um, not because I'm nosy, just because I'm really interested in bringing the best out of them and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. do you think you'll get into that line of work 
Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, think so? yeah, yeah, I do think so. As I've got a bit older now and, you know, I'm trying to kick the arrogance out of these kids. <laughs> that's what, that's my aim when I become a coach <laughs> or a manager. Um, no, I do, I do think I will, I'll go down that route. Um, actually doing some, a little bit of research on trying to get the uh, UEFA B license this year. So nice. hopefully that can, you know, materialise in something and then, yeah, take the patch job. <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. nah something something along them lines. I would love to, you know, obviously work at League of Ireland level. Um and then yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. You never know from there, yeah. Oh yeah, coaching's a, it's a it's a different chapter, man. It's yeah, so I imagine there's a yeah. lot of stuff behind the scenes that that would bring bring you down a little, I suppose. Yeah. But um it's something I'm interested in. I I I, I like I like how our manager works now with us, like we we there's massive respect there for him. Um, like I said, my my main respect for him is just because he's a family man and the way he treats treats me, um, and the respect that he shows me. So it's you take little pieces from managers throughout your whole career, and mm-hmm. that's with Graham Wesley. He was great, great family man with me as well. Let me go home see me my family anytime I wanted. So amazing, yeah. Um, yeah, it's something I I, I want to build that relationship with a team, and I I feel like as a manager, I'd be I'd be very capable of doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a real privilege to inspire youth. It definitely is. But um, you'll find yourself, well, maybe not, but like when I definitely started coaching, I definitely found myself leaning towards, maybe because I didn't play professionally, but definitely leaning towards, like I have to be like honest, like academically, tactically. And then you really do forget about like, Jesus, like that player is with me for two hours a week, three hours yeah. a week max. They're living a life that is entirely like anonymous to what I am. Yeah. And then that disconnect just hits in at the, the time where you least expect it. Yeah. Which is very interesting. That's why uh, you need to approach everyone with the same kind of like, you don't, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors with people. And like you're Not saying, dead. you're going seeing these guys for two hours, mm-hmm. or probably two times a week or whatever. And you, you don't really know what's going on. And this could be the release. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you want to bring them on and, and, you know, have good times with them and stuff and then really check up on them. Um, and it's something that as I've grown older and, you know, I've met people that have really cared for me, it's something that's really resonated with me that, you know, I want to be that person for people. Um, I think through being a manager or a coach, I, I think that will bring the best out of me. And, you know, I think that's a, a good character characteristic that I have. Mm-hmm. Do you think you'll have a dual blend of managing and coaching or do you think you'll... you'll go specifically into it I know you'll probably know once you get into it yeah. what you fancy the most yeah. just the thing I know they're talking about on the overlap but like the gaffer being on the grass how important it is no not, not how important it is just that saying yeah and people are talking but Carra says he hates it that's saying Jamie Carragher says on the grass, being like... on the grass I also don't like it Th- that's saying but do you think you'll be on the grass or do you think you'll be behind the scenes when it comes to, uh, to coaching management you know what it's like you said I don't think I'd know until I'm in it because I yeah. don't know what it's like to be a manager I'm yeah. sitting here with these like <laughs> ideal things that like if I'm a manager I'm going to be this I'm yeah, going to be yeah. that there's obviously pressures from board level and everything that else fans everything meets certain standards Um, I think it's one of them you'll need to be in it to know mm-hmm. obviously I think it'd be easier to go in as a coach and then you can impose like your, your own ideologies of how you see the game and stuff Um, so yeah I think uh, firstly it would have to be like a coach level because you couldn't go into manager level at that top level without yeah. knowing the pitfalls uh, mm-hmm. and you know being able to carry yourself um, you'll only get that by working on the uh, manager I suppose 100% mm. it will come with time of course be interesting that line of work is there anything else you think you want to do Not outside of football Um, yeah I want to do what you guys do yeah 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 I do really you want to be a do. ball striking coach no just, uh, <laughs> just pinging balls into somebody uh, <laughs> no it is that's something I, I, I do really enjoy I know your competitors at BTD and stuff like that. I do really enjoy watching kids get get better. It's like you said, it's it's infectious. Mm-hmm. Um, I say the feeling that you get from doing it is, is amazing. Especially then when you're getting feedback from parents saying, he's done this this week and he's been learning that all week and it's such a great privilege for you then to, you know, you've taught him that. So mm-hmm. that's something that really, I'm really, really passionate about. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully get to you guys' level one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's something I, I, it's something I really want to do. Um, you know, I don't know what kind of level or whatever, but I, it's something that I'm passionate about that mm-hmm. I think I could get involved in. Nice, nice. 
Very good to hear. Yeah, it's supplementary coaching is, in my opinion, something that is neglected. It's something that is getting much more, I would say, acceptance over the last couple of years. Primarily two ways. I think the first one is that a lot of the top clubs are bringing in supplemental coaches to work in their academies. Yeah. Uh, even who Morgan was talking about earlier, Noel Kingson, um, he was saying along the lines of, like, he's in Aston Villa at the moment, and he was originally brought in as a video analyst, but when they found out that, obviously, he has a UEFA B license, he has done supplementary coaching in the past, what Aston Villa are doing now is they have, uh, let's say, Kieran working specifically with the player for 45 minutes. And then when he goes to do his phases of play in like a 9v9 or 11v11, he would only watch that player. And then he would give specific feedback on the system of play just to that player. Yeah. So at club level, it's definitely respected. But I remember when I was doing uh, my UEFA B license and the various coaching badges and stuff and supplementary football, or let's say one coach to one player was, I'm going to say frowned upon. I think based on, like you said, on the, the player side, like social media was amplifying it in the wrong way. Mm. Um, like just running through ladders and just doing stupid shit, for example, but not like specific to what that player actually wants. Yeah, but yeah. I definitely see there's a shift and I definitely think there is a need for professional players to have an input in that space as well. Because mm. as you said, that's where the real connection is going to come from the relationship between the player and and the and the coach just on a one on one basis. Yeah. I find myself, especially with the, the more senior players who are playing for Ireland, for example, it's it's twenty minute conversation, forty yeah. minutes football. Yeah. All the time. It's like a venting thing, really. Yeah, some of them need an outlet. But they, yeah. they can't talk to people in the club, they can't talk to their gaffer because yeah. XYZ they don't want to say. But with someone that's supplemental, it's almost like having an external like obviously it's a coach, you're gonna work on technical stuff and whatnot but it's like uh, it's like yeah like someone, defense, someone's like a therapist, someone yeah, who like, understands where they come from from a football yeah. perspective to a degree yeah listen we haven't played pro football but we have a good idea of what's going on yeah. especially in, in the game and then we'll give them non-biased feedback because yeah. we're going to give them honest feedback to them yeah and Whereas like, at the yeah. club they could be the main man at the club and they're not getting that and mm-hmm. um, they're just getting told the people are just kissing their feet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas with like you're saying they're getting unbiased um real opinions of mm-hmm. what you think of it mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's good and I do agree with you it was with the supplemented coaching it's, it's, it was almost frowned upon I do think there's a massive change in it now like and mm-hmm. I know you guys are massive and um, so like obviously you would, would have played a part in that change and the opinion of that yeah I, I don't know it's an interesting one um, I think the players have done the major shift I think we've just kind of given them the platform yeah. if that makes sense well, players seek it yeah like they're seeking you look at any top player in, in the off season what are they doing like yeah. they're, they're going to a technical coach of some sort some sort of supplemental coach it's by choice like it, it doesn't just happen out of nowhere yeah um and if, if that's what top players are doing at the top of the game well they, it's going to filter down like yeah. anything and i think it's needed as well mm-hmm. i think there is a, a massive like need to do that sort of stuff um it's like you said that they might be getting at club level mm-hmm. because there's 20 odd players there that all need to be looked after as well so um yeah, there's the, I think it's a good market. Like it's, I, I, I'm a big fan of it, to be honest. Good. Because that technical development, is, I think we spoke about it on one of the podcasts before. Because like, if you look at some of the... It's a little bit different now because they have to play senior football. The whole Brexit thing, we say that all the time. But some players were going on... They'd be like 16, 17, maybe training twice a week, have no mm. real tactical knowledge, no yeah. technical knowledge to a degree. Then they're in a senior dressing room. They have a good six months, then they're gone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're playing... Top yeah. level, where it be League One Championship, Premier League for some players are across Europe, and they've yeah. no idea what's going on. No. They're just technically very good, and they yeah. just kind of get away with a lot, Wigan. and they learn as yeah. they go along. And listen, sometimes that's the best way to be. You kind of play off instincts. Yeah. But a lot of them are playing catch up. So a lot yeah. of the lads who come back to us in the in the off season, technically, you'd be surprised of like how much they actually need to work on, and they know it themselves. Yeah. Because they had like a fast track of how quickly so they became there, professional yeah. footballers, yeah. and they almost need to and no ego fair play to every single one of them who seek it mm. like so, some of the guys we've worked with especially over the last two or three years that we formed great relationships with will message like months in advance and be like here lads i'm struggling with this can you have a look at footage when yeah. i come back let's That's work cool, on it and they just chase that for like two months it could be the most basic thing in the world yeah. but you just chase it non-stop and, and then that just makes a huge difference amb- ambition to get better mm-hmm. i think there's always going to be that ambition for players to get better mm-hmm. um and then with what you guys do is it's just going to help that along the way mm-hmm. um, so yeah 
just feels the void a little bit yeah because players are seeking it that's like so me at home. like when i was 21 22 you you could not have told me anything because <laughs> i was the most complete player <laughs> like in my own head mm-hmm. but there was obviously things that i could have been working on and stuff and that wasn't really like that coaching wasn't really available then mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't ever remember anybody being doing one-to-ones mm-hmm. and stuff like that um so yeah i think it'll take the game onto a, a, a different level as well mm-hmm. so yeah. it helps yeah, it's an interesting one, man. Um, we've shifted our model because we originally started doing uh, one-on-one sessions with younger players, but I think now that that time has has developed, and you can only learn this on the job, like, but yeah. we made two strategic decisions. The first one is we never post clips of, like, younger players anymore, primarily on the arrogant side. People yeah. will, and we, we sniffed them out early now, but some yeah. players would come in, wanted to do a session just to get the clips. Yeah. And the moment that somebody mentions like, oh, is there going to be someone film? Like, it's just a red flag for us, isn't yeah. it? And that goes for senior players too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the second one was... But the clips still be good though. Be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would mind them myself. <laughs> nah, they'll be, you know, when they hit the bins and stuff. So it's like, it's perfect. Yeah, so and it's funny. get that attraction for them. Yeah. yeah. And look, I understand profile is very important. And I think we're kind of on the we're kind of on the border of football and I wouldn't say social media personality. I would say social media brand that people yeah. know, like it's an amplification. And uh, I don't know, it, it's, we need to make a lot of decisions sometimes on who gets that, that, that aspect, because there's some players that we know will be well able for. Yeah. They can like handle are, the yeah. idea of being a, they're generally top footballers. So they, yeah, they're yeah. already in the line. Like, that, they, that grand, like, like yeah. for most, it's not yeah. going to make a, a major difference, but yeah, yeah, if you give that to the wrong person at the wrong time, so it, using the audience it's it's not a case of just oh we don't want to feel their ego long term yeah. it's probably not gonna be good for them like yeah. again you go back to the idea of identity crisis and stuff and this is stuff yeah. we've obviously learned you have to be conscious of it but it's incredible how positive it can be for someone in such a short period of time yeah. and it's so detrimental long term that they don't yeah. actually understand mm-hmm. that they've like put that their whole identity with me on it. as well when i when i first played for pats um we had a game on RT, I scored the chip goal, mm-hmm. and then that was it. I kind of had a little, a bad spell after that because I got such, such praise after that. Everyone had seen it on TV and stuff. And, you know, that was me then. I, I completed it. Yeah. Like, that was all, that was my clip. That was my clip. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I found it hard then, like you said, it's another identity crisis. Like, what, what am I really about? Um, so then I just got associated myself. Oh, I'd done that chip, and I see that six weeks ago. Yeah. yeah and then that was that was all i had mm-hmm. so then i had to kind of readjust and you know keep on improving mm-hmm. whereas like you're saying with these kids just getting this one clip then that's it they think they've they've made it like because yeah. they've got an awful lot of likes on it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's always the, back down to basics it's what you're doing 95 percent of the time generally mm-hmm. what defines a player yeah. and then you, you always hear about players who have like moments yeah ben Affer's a good example mm-hmm. ben yeah. Affer's a joke now but as a joke in moments yeah like he's known for being a moment player he yeah. played at the top level Newcastle uh, was it Leon he played for he played yeah. a, a couple of big clubs obviously has has had a good career but he was never top of the top of the top because yeah. he just didn't produce like basics every single it, week yeah, yeah. because you can have moments like that where you go run the pitch and listen yeah. unbelievable it's like that you said with players in the Prem they just do the basics 90% of the time, mm-hmm. the, time they're, the basics are done like mm-hmm. um, so it's just big. It's a big thing in the game. Just doing the basics, right? Everybody wants that big clip, mm-hmm. um, but no. And that's kind of where I'm at now in my career. I'm like, just do the basics, right? And the rest will kind of look after itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, people tend to neglect the basics. Mm-hmm. Top players produce moments, mm. and top, top, top players do it just more consistently than than the rest. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like if you can control controllable stuff do very basic stuff week in week out but just do it really well yeah. and take pride in it like that you're going to be on the pitch for longer you're going to be fitter because you're looking after yourself physically and then those moments just kind of tend to just roll in a little bit they more do, they tend to like. just happen like yeah. I, I find and when I'm when I'm at it and I'm really working hard and I know how hard I'm working and I'm I'm proud of the work that I'm doing then moments come mm-hmm. easier Um, and then when I'm slacking a bit like the goals there's they're not really coming as much or the the perfect pass isn't coming as much so like you said you do you it comes with the hard work and just doing the basics right mm-hmm. um so yeah i'm trying to get back on to doing the basics right <laughs> when you were playing against the likes of chelsea i think villa was another one three one win and then lesser um i think harry mcgore is in that squad as well and mm. um, does 
Does the basics resonate with you with top players like that when you're playing those games, or is it the magic? No, it's the basics. Really? It's like some, you'd, well, you'd watch them and there was some, like Chalaba played again for Chelsea. Mm -hmm. and I was like, he's not great, but he, he does the normal things so good. Mm -hmm. Like he was just, like I wouldn't say he was technically so good. He wasn't, he wasn't great at anything, but he just done them all at a good level. Mm -hmm. Like passing was crisp. Shooting, I obviously didn't see much of his shots, but like I didn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't standoutish, but he did in a way of just being extremely good at being basic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, They're just so efficient. Yeah, and then it's obviously there's levels of speed that they can move at as, as, and do at that speed, um, which came into play for a lot of the other players. But there was a couple of players like that. Where I was like, this isn't, this isn't crazy as I thought it'd be. Mm -hmm. um, no, I did get chopped by Pedro. I saw it. Yeah, so <laughs> that was crazy. I slid Great for, I slid for about 50 minutes. Like, um, but yeah, there was moments like that where he was just excellent. William was very good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, that, there wasn't, like, even playing in that game, I was I was there and I was like, I could play at this level. Now, obviously, Chelsea aren't playing that badly every week. Um, but I was like, I could, I could be here. Like, this could be my setting. This mm -hmm. could be my stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got great confidence from it, but like I said, the ba they done the basics really, really well, and they could move faster. That's that was a big, big thing. Yeah, physically. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah, massively. Like I remember, William done a, a little touch around the corner, and he was gone like twelve, fifteen yards past me from one touch, and I, my head was still like torn. It was like a torn almost in slow mo to try track where he was. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, stuff like that, the way they move and the speed at which they move was, was the big, big standout for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've noticed big physical differences um, between, I would even say between the League Two players I've seen and the Championship players mm. physically, like yeah. body fat percentage, muscle mass, uh, speed, just the power. Just a sharpness like that. Yeah. It's just, a just so sharp. Like William was the sharpest guy I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Little touch around the corner. Where is he? It's hard yeah. to describe that, isn't it? Yeah, you have to be like is. watching it. Yeah, you, you have, have to be right beside it. it. And yeah, you, you have, have to, to go past it. You Someone has like... to go by you like yeah. that to know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's what that's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so it's mad. Yeah, because we talk about sharpness a bit, like talking to the lads who come back from the champ or whatever it is, and it's like, who was your toughest player this year? And the, they say X, Y, Z, and they go, well, why? He's so sharp. Yeah, can't get near him. Like, so and that's and what he's moving at that speed, but his touch will be crisp. And that, like then he's gone again. Mm -hmm. Touch is crisp, nice. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to watch on yeah. the telly. But you find like, a lot oh, of fast players they don't, they don't have the brains. Yeah, like they like these guys at well, what I felt playing against the likes of Willian and stuff. They had the brain then to pick the pass. Mm -hmm. They they weren't just speedboat no driver. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it was no one went and where to like engage players. Yeah. When to pop it off. When to yeah. keep it. Oh, and that's the way that pays. That's whatever. But that's it. it. But that <laughs> yeah, it gets to that stage. Like you were saying, obviously, you feel you could have played in that Chelsea yeah. midfield on that day, and fair play to you. <laughs> that's a decent <laughs> level. <laughs> Fabregas but, there, was he? Listen, that? Fabregas the time, get yourself a monster. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but that generally that is yeah. the defining factor, isn't it? Everyone at that level, League One, even top players. Mm. But it's just just the micro, micro, yeah. micro, micro, most and most stuff like so much. Yeah. I see it. I, I do it. I'm guilty of it. Um, I see it at League of Ireland level all the time. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. neglected. Mm -hmm. like it, it, physical programs isn't a major thing here. Obviously, there's more full-time football, thankfully, now that players can get that full like physical development from like younger ages. They have actual genu genuine programs that get you in shape physically, um, even just for general agility, body fat percentages, all the basic stuff that you hear yeah. about at top levels. But again similar to what we said about the technical development that's like neglected up until they actually get to league one or league yeah. two and then it's like right now you need then you're already behind yeah where everyone like, else yeah, so you catch, can catch, like, up. catch up you yeah. can catch up but you're already behind yeah and these these guys that are generally over there they've been at it for yeah. 10 years longer than you they know and that's why it's so tough to bridge that gap mm. um and that that's why the likes of the national team is, is struggling like the, yeah. there's very few irish players that are just closing that gap. I think it is getting a little bit better now. You obviously have spearheads and whatnot, like with Ev, Ev Ferg yeah. and players of that caliber. It is getting a little bit better. But what, what's your opinion on the national team currently? Um, do you know what? I think it was harsh the way Kenny was treated. Um, I liked what he was trying to do. Um, 
like what was the alternative to go back to what we were doing like just launching balls mm -hmm. like hopefully pick up a, a one nil win like shit results like that and like, i liked what he was trying to do um i just i just thought there was a negative vibe around kenny from the yeah. second he got the job mm -hmm. um no matter what he tried to do i don't think it would have went um would have went down well with anybody mm -hmm. um but I enjoyed, I enjoyed it, the the optimism of it, the the hope that I had. No, don't get me wrong, I didn't materialize that that often. But you know, you could see the patterns. You could see that they were trying to, you know, change the way they play. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I enjoyed it, but I, I think it was I was pretty sad the way I turned out, like for Kenny. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know what the alternative would be then. What. Like, what's the next guy gonna come in and do? I don't, yeah. I still don't know. Like, what was the crack? Like, well, yeah. where are we? Kenny tried to get them playing. I don't know whether the next guy might be able to get more out of them. Maybe. Um, but, you know, I, I enjoy try, trying to play. I enjoy watching them try to play. Um, I really like Cullen in the midfield as well. Like, mm -hmm. Played against him one time. Uh, he was at, I think it was Bradford. Uh, I couldn't get near him. He was sharp that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, I I I, I like try, I like what you're trying to do. I just think it, it turned a bit shit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the the view of Kenny was wasn't accepted by a lot of people before even like yeah, it was a, a sour chance. atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah, around the whole thing, we we were the same. We're like, well, what is the alternative? Like, yeah. the, we're at least we're trying to do something. Yeah, at least he's trying to change something, and you know, bring an enthusiasm to it where it's not just let's just sit in for ninety, mm -hmm. Nick going at the end. Like, yeah, it's it's just that's unsustainable. You you yeah. can get you can qualify for tournaments we have every so often like in that, doing yeah, so, yeah. and after those tournaments, what does everyone say? Oh, we need to change our style. Or in the tournament, you get zero points. Yeah, because yes. why? Yeah. You, you, it's unsustainable. Like yeah. you, you, there's no, it's it's just not a winning formula. Yeah. Like you look at anyone who camps these days, for example, and people always say, oh, but the likes of Atletico have such success. Yeah, have you seen Atletico on the counter? Yeah. Oh my god! Rapid. Unbelievable yeah. and so well organized and set up to do yeah, so. And you also yeah. have Griezmann in your in your front line and Morata, who is outrageous <laughs> scoring goals. But I've never seen him play well. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, exactly. there's like, always a bit. There's a system, stuff, isn't yeah, there? But he always scores. Yeah, he yeah, always scores. Always turns up big games. But like things like that, there's a system like it, yeah, that have works speed, for them, and that's Ireland, also years Ireland of work. Sit in, but they don't have that speed and stuff. Yeah. So ah, I, I do. I, I like what you're trying to do. I just think it's on there. So. Hmm. What's the next step? Hopefully, yeah, the next step is is some some good stuff because it's it's been it's been shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I'm going around watching the World Cup and I think it was 2002, was it? Yeah, mm. and like that that was the greatest time. Like, I man, you yeah. had to wake up early to watch a game and you had the tricolor and I had the each fixture. Yeah, with the group on it. I remember, I think it was Guinness or something that had it. Uh, I remember that was a great time to be alive, like and be Irish. Mm -hmm. And Matty Holland scored against, I think it was Cameroon and stuff like that. That was unbelievable. Yeah. That's the last memory I have of actually being happy watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, now we got to, was it Euros? 2016? 16, yeah. Robbie Brady's header against Italy. Now I was up in arms. Yeah, that, <laughs> I was happy then as well. Yeah, I was, I was locked. <laughs> yeah, <same. laughs> uh, but yeah, like, times, like, we had <clears throat> bare minimum amount of success throughout the years. But that's yeah. the most memorable thing that I've, I remember from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think maybe just a final note as well on the uh, on the current season. Obviously, we were at the at the cup final last year. It was an amazing, uh, an amazing spectacle having that sort of atmosphere in the home stadium. My assumption is that I think from from what I gather from most players is that the league is really what people want. Obviously, it's the the crown jewel of hard work. Um, yeah. I'm guessing all efforts are going towards the league and retain the cup as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, we lost on Friday, so yeah, the league's gone, isn't it? The fans, are, the fans are done <laughs> yeah. with that. Uh, Up and done. Nah, it's early doors, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's the way it is. I know, know like, man. Uh, I know. I know. in the league now. <laughs> uh, like, nah, the league, the league is there. I think. Um, I I'd never discredit anything we're over still have done or are doing. The top top team, mm -hmm. dirty are top top team. Shell's very good this year again, but you know what I believe what we have in our change room is is good enough to, you know, win the league. Obviously, you need massive luck, a lot of things to go your way. But um, start of the year, John set out the target. We want to win the league. We want to retain the cup. I I firmly believe in in his idea, and you know, I firmly believe in the team. So um, yeah, 
go go in the cup and you know take rovers off the perch yeah someone has to do it yeah yeah that was great yeah that was good crack i enjoyed Cheers. that yeah pleasure having you on no problem very enjoyable very enjoyable time yeah Strand's ultimate team now hopefully <laughs> like, i'm actually going back yeah it's, it's, uh, it's monday so you get to play foot champs on a monday now so i have six games love, left love that and then i'll, I'll love see if she wants that. to watch a film excellent, <laughs> excellent. Oh, no, what an evening yeah. right thank you again yeah. pleasure appreciate it thank you very Cheers, much thank you <laughs>